In this final section, let's look at some of the benefits of industry standard protocols. Utilities benefit by selecting an industry standard protocol in many ways. One way is by breaking their dependence on a single vendor. The utility is now free to select products based on the performance, quality, and price, not just on which vendor has the best protocol. There are other benefits too. For example, the field technicians only need to learn one protocol, which can reduce training costs. Industry standard protocols typically have a wide number of third-party support services and test tools available as well. The utilities can participate directly in the evolution of the protocol by participating in the users group. Some utilities have even chosen to have representation on the technical committee. In this way, they can ensure that the protocol continues to evolve to meet their market needs. Vendors also benefit from using industry standard protocols. They can avoid non-recurring engineering costs to add new or update existing protocols for each project. They also benefit from using well-documented, proven protocols. Vendors can also leverage others' experience by participating in the development of a common protocol instead of investing in a proprietary protocol. Many vendors have representatives on the DNP3 technical committee for this reason. By supporting industry standard protocols, vendors can be assured of a large utility client base. Vendors can also benefit from having readily available support services and test tools, which lower their development and maintenance costs. One of the key benefits of industry standard protocols is interoperability. Interoperability allows utilities and vendors to focus on performance, quality, and price rather than on the protocol. As with any protocol, equipment vendors develop products with the goal of selling them to utilities and other customers. With DNP3, the technical committee clarifies the specification and develops conformance test procedures. The end user utility may specify in its request for quotes or proposals that the supplied equipment must have successfully completed the conformance test procedures. Vendors can use the conformance test procedures to test their products and claim DNP3 compliance. The DNP user group website lists products that have completed self-testing and or independent testing for compliance. The independent test lab may issue a certificate of compliance. Interoperability requirements are defined in Volume 8 of the DNP3 specification. Each device should have an associated DNP3 device profile document. This document has typically been provided in a printed format. However, going forward, devices should supply the document using the defined XML schema. An XSLT document is available to provide an HTML version of the device profile that is more human readable and can be printed. The device profile document provides configuration information such as protocol capabilities supported and device settings. The XML-based device profile document facilitates mapping the device configuration to IEC 61850 object models too. The device profile document provides a point list which includes scaling, units, and a text description. It also includes an implementation table which indicates the supported data types, function codes, and qualifier codes. Certification testing is designed to promote interoperability. This allows utilities to use equipment from different manufacturers with a high degree of confidence that the equipment will work together. The DNP3 conformance test procedures are currently approved for subset level 1 and subset level 2 outstations. Conformance tests for master stations are currently under development. Vendors may self-test their devices or they may have an independent test lab perform the conformance tests. The DNP user group website lists devices and their certification status. An end user may opt to specify that self or independent testing is required of the equipment to be used in their networks. Any vendor may use the conformance test procedure to self-certify their devices. The Triangle Microworks Communication Protocol Test Harness supports an optional module that automates the conformance test procedure. This screenshot shows an example of this module. Individual tests are shown down the left, and the right-hand column shows the current status of the testing. The test results are color-coded in both columns to highlight tests that have passed or failed. This slide provides a summary of normal DNP operations. On startup, the master clears the device restart IIN indication in the outstation and issues a class 1230 pull. This pull will retrieve all buffered events and the current static data in order to initialize the master's database. Periodically after that, the master issues class 1, 2, and 3 event pulls either together or individually at different rates. If the outstation sets its need time IIN bit, then the master should issue a write time request. And the outstation should request confirmation for any messages that contain events. 
DNP3 provides the features required of a SCADA communications protocol. It provides standardized rules for data transfer and promotes interoperability among vendors. It ensures reliable data transfer using CRCs. It provides useful features such as timestamps and freeze operations, provides data quality indicators, and provides features to detect or prevent unauthorized use or monitoring of data. It also minimizes protocol overhead. DNP3 is well established in the electrical utility industry and is becoming established in other industries as well. It has an active user group that is eager to enhance the protocol to meet new requirements while maintaining backwards compatibility. The DNP users group maintains an active website. This site contains all the protocol documentation and meeting minutes. It also has a list of equipment that supports DNP3 and indicates certification status of that equipment. Users may join forums to have discussions with other users as well. The DNP user group holds a general meeting each year at the Distributech conference. This presentation provided a high-level overview of DNP3. For more information, consider joining the DNP user group and downloading the complete set of documentation. Once again, the DNP user group can be found at www.dnp.org. You may also wish to study the IEEE P1379 document, which recommends DNP3. You may also consider joining the SCADA mailing list. While not specifically focused on DNP3, the SCADA mailing list does provide worldwide collaboration on SCADA topics. Finally, feel free to contact us at Triangle Microworks at www.trianglemicroworks.com.